Okay, in this video we're going to try to mimic uh, Python. Uh, Python has the in operator and it allows us to detect if a character is in a string. It also allows us to detect uh, if, if a larger string is inside of a string, so if, if a string is a substring of another string. So let's, let's look at a couple of examples. The best way to probably do this is um, with Python 3 in interactive mode. <clears throat> so I can say, is the character A in the string apples. That is true. Uh, I can say is the character P in the string apples. Is uh, A A in apples? No. Is app in apples? Yes. Okay, so this in operator uh, is basically detecting membership. Is this uh, membership, does, does this first operand have a membership in this collection. Okay, so <clears throat> there's two ways to look at this. The first way is the easy way, which is we're just looking at one character. We're gonna see if one character is in this list. That's what we're gonna do first. Then we're going to try to do uh, something more complicated, a series of characters. So this would be like testing two characters, three characters, or more, right? So let's get to work here. So we're going to, uh, instead of using an in operator like, like Python does, we're just going to have a function. And our function is going to uh, basically be called, you know, is character in the string. All right, and so you pass it a uh, character and a string. And you want to check to see if this character is in this string. So first of all, we want to make sure that we just have one character. So we can say if the length of our character is greater than one, right, or does not equal one, then that means we have an error. And so we're, we're going to say, um, we're going to just return false. So if the length of the string is uh, is not one, it's not a character. So we're just always going to return false. There's lots of different ways we could handle this. We could throw an exception. We could do lots of different things. But one of the easiest things to do, we'll just say that's false. Because uh, is the character in string? If this isn't a character, then it's not in the string, right? Because it's not a character. So we're just going to say that's false. Right? And there are different ways you could decide to code that if you wanted to. All right, so that's that's one simple case. So at this point, we definitely have a character in C. All right, so if we definitely have a character stored in this variable C, then we can start iterating through the characters of S. So I can have um, <clears throat> for. Uh, character in S if character is equal to C return true. All right. And so this is essentially all we need. So let's call this function. And we're going to pass in a character, and we're going to see if A is in uh, apples. All right, and we're going to print that out. Is A in apples? All right, so we can run this Python three character in string. A is in apples, and we can try a bunch of these. Let's duplicate this. Is P and apples. And we're going to try APP also. But this, the length here of our character does not equal 1. So we're going to get a false for this one. All right. Now later when we try to do the substring function, this one would be true. Because this one is specifically looking for a character in the string. All right. And then we need to check one that's false too. So we want to check, um, <clears throat> we'll check for the letter Z. Z and apples. So we should get two trues and then a false. True, true, none, and false. 
Okay, so why do we get a none here? Well, the issue is if we look at all of the different ways our function returned a value, uh, if the length is not one, if the character length is not one, we, re we explicitly returned false. Now, nowhere in here do we have return none. Return none is the default return value, though, if you don't specify it. So what's happening here is in the case of Z, we are looking to see if the character Z is in apples. We iterate through the characters in our string, right? Character is never equal to Z. So does A equal Z? No. Does P equal Z? No. Does P equal Z? No. Does L equal Z? No. Does E equal Z? No. Does S equal Z? No. And then the loop is over. So at that point, Python is at this line looking for more code, but there isn't any more code. So it just exits because there's no more code in the code block. It's as if we had a return here. And if, if the code block just exits, then it returns none. So really what we want here is we want to return false in this case. So if it goes through the entire string, entire string, every single character in the string, and compares it and cannot find a match, then we need to return false. Okay, so that's better. So we got two trues and two falses. All right, so that's character in string. So this is just a little program, and we're just mimicking sort of the in behavior, but it gives us a better idea of, of how that works and what's going on. All right, it helps build our logic. All right, so let's try um, substring. So I'm going to make a new file, and I'm going to try to make a substring. So I'm going to define a function is substring. And so we're going to have uh, s1 and s2. So we're going to check to see if S1 is a substring of S2. So what do we need to do here? Uh, let's, let's go down here, and I'm going to pass on this implementation for a second. And we're going to go down here and call it is substring. Now we want to check to see if um, app is a substring of apple. All right. But we also want to check to see, what about something like this? What if we check to see if apples is a substring of app? Is this even possible? Well, this string is shorter than this string. So there's no way this can be true. Right? So since that's the case, uh, what I can do at the very beginning is compare the lengths of these. And if the second string is shorter than the first string, then we, we can just return false. We don't have to iterate through a loop or do anything because automatically there's no chance it could possibly uh, it could possibly be a substring, right? So how do we do, how do we say that? How do we phrase that in code? Uh, if uh, the length of string one is greater than the length of string two get rid of that pass statement. Okay, This is an if block, and so we're going to have to indent. right? If that's the case, then we're going to return false. That means this is not a substring. So if the string 1, this one, is longer, the length is greater than the length of string 2, then return false, because it is not a substring. All right? So otherwise, uh, if the length of S1 or the length of S2, if either one of these is zero, now it's it's a very um, it's a very common mistake to want to do something like this. Uh, if length of s1 or length of s2 equals 0. So this is the double equals, and it's a comparison operator. It always compares the left-hand side to the right-hand side and returns a Boolean value. 
the OR operator compares two Boolean values. Okay, so you always have to have a full expression, a full Boolean expression on each side of the OR. So this should be equal zero. So even though in English we would say the length of S1 or the length of S2 is equal to zero, you have to do the full expression because that is what evaluates to a true or a false. And then that evaluates to a true or false. And then the OR operator acts on those. So if either one of these is true, then the whole thing is true. So that's, that's how the Boolean OR operator works, right? So if either one of those is zero, then we're going to return false. Because if this side is zero, then this can't possibly be a substring. And if this is zero, then there's, there is nothing to check for, right? It's the empty string, and this isn't empty. So this does not contain the empty string. You, you might get into some philosophical conversations about whether or not the empty string is infinitely in here, right? Maybe that's up to you. But for all practical purposes, it's not helpful to consider that to be true, right? So here's two cases that we've taken care of, right? So if the length of the first one is greater than the length of the second one, return false. If uh, either one of them is zero, the length of either one of them is zero, then return false. We could actually combine these into one statement, or we could make a third statement, right? We could also do something like this. If, right, so these are three different if statements, right? We could also combine them all. So let's rewrite that as one if statement. So it's the first one. We can highlight this, copy it. So if the length of string one is greater than the length of string two, or the length of string one equals zero, or the length of string 2 equals 0. So what we've done here, we, we've sort of made our code simpler. Sometimes, uh, sometimes this isn't referred to as simpler, though, because it's, there's more phrases in one line, and it's a little bit harder to read. This is sometimes considered easier to read. So this is sort of a preference thing. Uh, I believe in Python, uh, they tend to frown upon really long expressions like this. Uh, you might do, this, this isn't that bad though. This is only uh, a couple of different or statements. Sometimes you might want to put parentheses around them to make sure it's clear which ones are the Boolean expressions. You could do something like that if you wanted. But ultimately, it's up to the, the programmer, so whichever one you decided. But these are all effectively doing the same thing. Okay, So I'm going to have this all be in one line and then return false. Okay, So if any of those conditions are true, then we return false because this can't be a substring of that. All right. At this point, though, we know that we have data in our strings. There is a length to both of them. Because if there wasn't a length of one of them, we'd already have returned false. So that means we can try to iterate through. And we want to check to see uh, <coughs> if there is, uh, if this one is a substring. Now, we sort of have to, to think through how we're going to do this. Because there's, uh, we could have a couple of different um, examples here. So let's look at is app in... Um, Pineapple, right? I believe that's how you. Yeah, that's right. So uh, let me just check the spelling. Out. Yeah, that that works. So in this case, it doesn't start at the beginning, right? So we're gonna have some index that's iterating over pineapple, and at some point, this index is going to uh, indicate this character which also matches this first character. When that happens we have to then test the second character and then that character. If that is a match then we test that character and that character. And if we've run out of these characters then this is a match. All right? So we have to think through logically what is a way that we could do that. 
Y. So we definitely want to iterate through all of the characters in string two, right? That's sort of the first thing we have to do. We want to go through one at a time, and we're searching for uh, a character that matches this first character, okay? So rather than use a for loop, let's let's use a while loop here. We're going to have, uh, this is going to be i2. We're calling this i2 because it's the index for string 2. Okay, and we're going to start that index at 0. <clears throat> so string 2 has an i2 index, and we're going to increase that as we go. All right, so we're going to make a while loop while um, i2 is less than the length of s2. We're going to do something, and then increment i2. All right. So one of the things we can do to, to see if this is working is we'll, we'll just print out um, i2, and we'll print out the string s2 and the item at index 2. Okay, So this is retrieving. S2 is our second string, right? And then I2 is that index. So this should return the character. So we should be printing out the index number and then the character associated with that index number. All right, so let's look at that. Uh, let's just run. Let's just run the pineapples one first, and we'll leave the others. Comment it out. Okay, so save this. We're going to run Python 3 substring. OK, so this is good. This is iterating through pineapples. Now, at a certain point, we want to compare each one of these characters. We want to compare them to the first value in S1. So we're going to have to have an I1, an index 1. So index 1 is the index we're going to use here. All right, so at the very beginning of the loop, uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a character, and we're going to call that uh, string 1, the value at, at index 1. Okay, So this character is the character in string one. So right off the bat, before we start the, the while loop, we're going to grab this character and store it in chr. The reason we're doing that is because as we iterate through each one of the characters over here, we want to check to see if this character matches the character we have. And if it does, then we have to start a comparison. All right. So what we do here is if the character we have stored, chr, if that is equal to this character we found, then that means we have at least a first, first character match. All right, so in this case, a is equal to the a here in pineapples. And we can print something out to indicate that. OK, so here we see after we printed out the character A, we see there's a first match. right? And that's what we thought. right? We have a character here that is the first character. And then we are matching that character. But now we need to test all of the characters. right? We need to test to see if all of these are the uh, the following characters here. OK, so what's one way we can do that? Well, we can increment i i1. We can use a while loop and increment i1 until it's it's uh, greater than the length of i or of s1. Okay. Basically, we're just going to make another loop. The index increments, just like here we did for uh, string 2. We made an index, and it increments 
and the loop continues while i2 is less than the length of the string. So here we're going to do the same thing. While i1 is less than the length of this string, so string 1, so i1 and s1, Okay, so, so we have a match. We know the first character's match. Right? And then we're going to, at some point, uh, we're going to need to increment i1. And we're going to say, um, oops, if uh, i1. We're going to continue through this loop. If this index number, if the character associated with S1 here matches the character associated in this string. So we're going to have some value um, we're going to add to each one of these indices. Okay, So there's some value. Index 1 here will say uh, I1 plus equals 1. So at some point in through this loop, we're going to have to increase the value here. So what we're checking for is basically if these do not match. Okay, If these do, do not match, we have uh, the character string 2 at index 2, right? That index is here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Our index is right here and the character associated with that is A. So this is string 2, this whole string, and grab the character at index 2, which should be A. Right? So if that character is equal to string 1, the item at index 1, then that's a good thing. That means we are, we have a match so far, right? But the match isn't concluded until we iterate through the entire uh, list of items, right? The entire string. Okay, so this would be the first match. So if this is the case, we're going to add one. All right. Uh, now here, the next time through the loop, I1 has increased. So I1 started out at 0, right? And now I1 is 1. So that means in string 1, the character we're looking at is P. So that's this one, S string 1, I1. So this is now going to be the character P. But this is still stuck on this character A. So each time through this, loop, I, uh, this while loop, we want to add i1 to this. Okay. The reason is this is uh, zero initially. So this is so this is i1 is index zero. This is um, string two. I two is zero one two three four. So i two is index four. Now, as we compare these, if I add 0 here, it's still A. And if I have 0 here, it's A. We're comparing those. Now, I1 goes up. And now, that index is 1. So, I2 is still index of 4. But I add to it I1, which is 1. And so, now we can compare that. So, whatever index value uh, I1 is, we add that to where we're, we're checking for a match. So in this larger while loop, we've basically paused here once our index is on a potential match. Once we're on a potential match, we mo go into this separate mode. That's what this while loop is doing. It's a separate mode that's comparing everything from that point on to see if we have a match. Because we might not have a match. If, if the, the string is a pineapple, these two might be a match, but then we see that the next character is not. And so we would have to break out of that. 
All right. So we're comparing if the string string two at index two, which is sort of our starting point for the match, plus the i1 value, so that starts out at zero, is equal to the item in the string at that index value. Right? So that, that it's a little complicated, but that's sort of what's happening, right? So if it is, we add one and we keep going. Else, then we can break out of the loop. Right? If we don't have a match, then we don't need to keep going down, down the road. So here if I have a pineapple and we see that here's a match, right? And then we go through this loop again and, and test the next character and we say, oh, that's not a match. I don't need to test the third character because it doesn't matter. We already don't have a match, right? So we break out of this loop. Now, we need some way of indicating whether or not this portion of the code was successful. Right? So we could say something like found match or we'll just call it match equals true. So we'll start this boolean value out as true. And then if we reach this else else statement at some point then that means match was false. Right, so this is the condition when these two comparisons are not equal. So that's a, that's a comparison when, say, for example, that character and this character are not equal. So that is not a match. So we set match equal to false. Now the reason we do it this way is because after the loop exits, we need to know did this loop find a match? And if it did, then the whole thing is true. If we found a match in here, then that does indeed mean that this string is a substring of this string, right? So we can say if match return true. So if we have a match, so if match equals true, you could also write this as match equals true, return true. All right, so I know this is a little bit difficult to puzzle over, but try to make sure you go over that in your head and see what's going on there, okay? But this style is common where you set something to true or false and then in a particular case, switch it, right? And then at the end of the, the loop, you'll check again, All right? This is a common strategy, it's a common pattern, All right? So um, if we have a match, then we're going to return true, all right? Now, otherwise, eventually, we're going to get through uh, this if statement, right, one way or another. If we iterate through this whole loop um, and we have a match, we return true. If not, there was no match, then we break out of this. Right? So we're no longer in this if statement. So we're, in, we're still in this greater while. Now that greater while, going back to our original example, our i2 kind of paused here while we checked to see if the next three characters were a match. In this case, uh, it is a match, but if we had done something like this, a pineapple, initially the i2 character would be here, paused, waiting to check the next three characters for a match, right? This was not a match, so then it continues to the next until it finds another A, right? So another character. So character here is always that first item of our string that we're trying to find. It's always that first character, right? So again, each one of these loops is sort of doing a separate thing. This is iterating through each character, looking for a match for that first character of, substring, or of string one, right? And then this loop is sort of a subroutine. This loop is once we know we have that, so if we have that, right, first match, then we're going to check to see if the rest of the characters match. Right? So this should get us pretty close. It won't get everything though. All right, so let's do a little code cleanup here. All 
right? And if we get through the entire loop, then that means that means we did not find a match. That means we never returned true. All right. Now there's one little issue with this, which we'll address next. So make sure you take some time, look over this code, make sure you know what's going on with it. Right? While I2 is less than the length of S2. Let me switch displays again real quick. There we go. Alright, as we go down here. Let's go ahead and test this out. Sorry about that. We're going to run substring as a Python 3 program. OK, we see first match. And we need to print out if this is true. So we're going to see if this is true. So it says it's true. Let's print out the rest of these. Let's see if these are true as well. Print. OK, so is app in uh, a pineapple? Right. Uh, we don't need these print statements. We're going to comment them out because we might need to edit some stuff later and, and see. These basically just help us see what's going on in our program. But in the final version of our program, we don't want these to actually print anything. We just want to know a true or false. right? So now we see when we run this, we get true, true, and false. All right? So this is like the is substring. So is app in this? This is true because we see it there. Is app in apples? This is true because we see it there. Is apples in app? No, it's not because this string is too small. Okay, so this appears to be working. Now there's one uh, additional case that we need to look into. Um, let's look at something like this. Uh, is app in snap? The case we're going to run into here is at this point we're gonna see okay we have a match right a and a and then we're gonna go into this loop and we're gonna start comparing but the problem is there's not enough characters in this string to complete the checks so at some point we're gonna get an index out of range because we're gonna try to compare this third character and there is no third character here All right so let's take a look at this Sure enough, index error, string index out of range. So how can we account for this? Well, one thing is once we reach this point of our string, you know, this is the larger string. Um, let's call it a thumb snap. So this is a larger string. Whenever we get to the point where the remaining characters of this string is less than the length of this string, then there's no chance this can be a substring of that, right? So here, once we're checking this string, we already should know, the program doesn't know, right? But we should, as individuals, if we're doing what this program is doing and we're checking one character at a time, once we're here, we see there's only two characters here, but there's three here. So this can't possibly, uh, none of this, checking these characters shouldn't matter, right? So what we need to do is stop our loop after, um, as soon as the number of characters left in this substring is less than the length of this string. All right, so that's this bigger loop, i2, index 2, is iterating through this larger string, right? 
as soon as I2, instead of it being less than the length of string 2, it needs to be less than the length of string 2 minus the length of string 1. Right? That should stop it. So if the length of string 2 is 4 minus 3. So if this is less than, uh, if I2 is less than 4 minus 3, then we run the loop. So we can check for this one. And then we go to the next one. Is uh, 1 less than 4 minus 3? No, 1 is not less than 1, so the loop would break. But actually, we would need to compare here. So we need one more value. So we're going to subtract the lengths and then add one. All right, Because here, this is index 0. And that's fine. We should compare those. And here, this is index 1. But we still need to compare those. right? We need to compare A here. Okay, So there, there's two, uh, two tests we need to do here. Um, So here I've got APP at the end, and this is going to verify if this works. This with just AP should not work, right? But this with APP at the end should work, All right? And, and we can test these cases. All right, so we get a, a false. Let's see, looks like there's a an error. Oh no. Okay, so we get false. App is something wrong with my expression here. So the length of string 2, as long as i2 is less than the length of string 2, which is the length of this. So if that is less than that, we want to keep looping. But it has to be less than that. And then subtract 3, or rather the length of string. Ah, that should be string 1. That's the button. Okay, so the length of string 2 minus the length of string 1. Right, I had string 2, so that was just going to be 0. And that's why they were all, all failing. Okay, so very often in computer science, one character is the source of your problem. All right, so we look at this. And now we see true, true, false, false, true. So let's look and see if that's correct. Is app in pineapple? True. Is app in apples? True. Uh, is apples in app false? Is app in snap false? Right, there's the false false, and then is app in snap adapt? That is true. Now we might try uh, one more test, um, something like that, just because it's the start. So a lot of times you want to, when you're testing things, you want to test for edge cases. So you want to test for problems at the beginning of the string and problems at the end of the string, and then the general problem anywhere in between. So usually the beginning and the end are sort of special cases that you have to consider and test separately. Like we had to test this separately. That would have been a problem if we didn't, right? It wouldn't have been an accurate function, right? So always try to think of specific tests that you might have to do uh, that affect the beginning different than, differently than the rest of the problem. Same for the end. And then usually there's some general purpose solution for everything in between. All right, so um, there's just some tips there for just sort of thinking like a computer scientist. All right, so uh, print, and we'll test this last one, and we should be good. All right, so app is not apps. So that works. So it looks like is substring works. So this, this is, it gets a little bit more complicated than you might think, right? It's something that's very easy to do visually, like we look at this, but to get the computer to do this, it's rather complicated. We have an outer loop, this while loop, remember, is doing one thing, and it's just iterating through this, this string two, one character at a time, until it finds a match of the first character. That's all it does, one character at a time, and it's like start of the match. As soon as it finds that start of the match, then, so if we have this starting match, that's that first match, then we try this subroutine. The subroutine then is going to 
compare everything from that current character one character at a time to string one. Right? If we have a match, right, then we never reach this else statement. Right? So these are equal each time through this loop, and then we break out of the loop without having turned this to false. So that's when we have a match. If we don't have a match, at some point these two characters are not equal, so match is false. So we don't have a match, so we don't return true, and then we're here, which means we are out of the if statement here, which means we're at the bottom of this while loop, and then we add one to i2 and start the whole process over again. So it's a little complicated. I highly recommend you try to code this up yourself from memory. Uh, code it up while you watch this, uh, but then try to code it up yourself from memory a couple different times. And if you can do this, it's a good sign uh, you're going to be okay in computer science. Now there's a whole lot more difficult problems than this, but you do really need to understand something like this. And as I said, there's, there's significantly more complexity to it than um, to, to code it up than you might ima imagine, because something like this is very easy for a, uh, a person to do. But, um, but only in these small examples, though. A computer is much better at this if string two is massive. If this is like you know thousands of characters, that's actually really hard for a human to do, right? Little examples are easy for a human to do, but the computer, if we make the computer do it, it's really big at the larger examples, but we have to make sure it works. We have to do our testing. So these are all the test cases, all right? So that should be enough for this video.